Hello, hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about correlation and what we need to think about when we run one. As I always say, it is easy to do stats to produce a p-value, especially with PRISM, but it is not so easy to do good stats, as in stats we can believe to actually quantify how much we can trust what our data are telling us. In a nutshell, we run a correlation when we want to know if there is a relationship, an association between two continuous variables. Now, if we want to do a good job and looking at this graph, there are a few questions we need to answer to. First, we need to think about the type of data we are going to apply the correlation to. Then, what is that line? How is it built and what does it tell us? Also, what are R and R square we often see associated with correlation? And is R square actually the square of R, by the way? Okay, let's get on with it. First of all, when it comes to statistics, which are pretty scary for a lot of us, it is super important to remember what it is that we are actually doing and the thought process we should stick to. So first, we need to remember it is all about statistical inference. We look at a sample and we are going to use what that sample tells us to infer to the general population. So it is really important that this sample is a good representation of what is actually happening in the population from which it is taken. It is also important that this sample is big enough and I talk about it in the video on power analysis. Second, we should be led by the biology or the scientific question in a wider sense. So, we run an experiment or make an observation and we observe an effect of some kind, say that two variables seem to behave in a consistent fashion. The first question should be, is it meaningful, as in exciting enough that it is worth exploring further? If the answer is yes, then we want to know if it is real, as in if it is likely to be true in general. For that, we use a statistical test. And most statistical tests produce a statistic value, like the t-value for the t-test, for instance, or r for the correlation, as we will see in a minute. This statistic is pretty much always the combination of the absolute effect, the noise, so the variability in the data, and the sample size on which we base the confidence we have in what we see. That statistic is compared to a critical value, and if it is bigger than it, we reach significance. I explain more about this critical value business in the video on power analysis. Now, stats are all about understanding and controlling variation. So, to do that, difference and noise are combined into a ratio often referred to as the signal-to-noise ratio. Many parametric tests, such as the correlation or variation on the theme of that ratio, which we want big, right? A big effect and very little variability so that we can identify association. Okay, so it comes from physics, and these guys say that if the noise is low, then the signal is detectable and bingo, for us this is statistical significance. But if the noise, for example the inter-individual variability, is high, then the same signal will not be detected and we don't reach statistical significance. And the correlation is exactly about that. So the effect here, the signal, is similarity, right? Similarity between x and y. When x goes up, so does y and vice versa, and all that in a linear fashion. So there we go. The coefficient of correlation r is just that, a ratio of the absolute effect, the similarity of behavior between x and y, over the variability of these variables. So math-wise, we have the covariance at the numerator, so how the variables co-vary, so vary together, and the variability at the denominator, namely the standard deviation of both x and y. If you want to learn more about variance and standard deviation, check out the video on descriptive statistics. Okay, so the most widely used correlation coefficient is Pearson Product Moment Correlation Coefficient R, quite a mouthful, right? It quantifies the magnitude and the direction of the relationship between two variables, and it is designed to range in value between minus one and plus one, and in strength goes from negligible to very strong. As a rule of thumb, beyond 0.6 in absolute value is worth exploring further. 
Now, there is also the coefficient of determination R square, which is really cool. It gives the proportion of variance in Y that can be explained by X, often in percentage. So it helps big time with the interpretation of R and it's basically the effect size. And it is about not being misled by a p-value, which we should never trust on its own. Let me show you. Say we are told about an association between two variables and all we see at first is the p-value, which happens to be very low. So we think, wow, that looks exciting. And then we get R itself and see it is minus 0.34, which is a bit disappointing, right? Finally, we work out R square and we realize it's only 12%. And at last, we do what we should have done in the first place. Always, we look at the data and we realize that out of the three values, R square is perhaps the most informative or rather the less misleading. Now, second scenario, same thing. We do not get to see the data. We only get the p-value, which is 0.04. So we think, hmm. Then we ask for R, which is minus 0.83. And we think, wow, yummy. And it gives an R square of almost 70%. Finally, looking at the graph, we get the whole story. We see that the sample is small, hence the quite high p-value for a strong association, which reminds us of the importance of power in stats. So we can see that beyond the graphical examination, we do need the three parameters, r, r square, and p, to get a full picture. Okay, so two more things before we see how we run a correlation in PRISM. First, we are talking here about the Pearson correlation, which is a parametric test. It means that we need to explore the data to check that they are, among other things, normally distributed, which we can assess kind of by checking for the symmetry of the values on either side of the line of best fit. We are talking about a bivariate Gaussian distribution. Bivariate, because we have two variables, X and Y, and Gaussian, because of Carl Friedrich Gauss, who was the guy who first described the normal distribution. In the video on goodness of fit, I explain how to check more formally for normality. And speaking of the line of best fit, it is not coming from correlation, but from a regression. A correlation is telling us about the nature and the strength of the association, whereas the regression is telling us about the nature and the strength too, but also about the prediction. It's telling us the extent to which X can predict Y. A regression will give us the equation of the line of best fit. Right, let's do it now. We are going to look at the relationship between the amount of light and the depth at which we measure it in a tree, and why not? First of all, as always, we start by looking at our data, and this is what we get, a negative relationship between the two variables. This is the association we want to quantify. Now, between you and me, you do not need to be a botanist to guess that the deeper we get from the top of the canopy, the darker it gets. Anyway. To run a correlation in PRISM is super easy. After having entered the data in an X and Y format, we choose, you will never guess, correlation. The correlation window, by default, will suggest Pearson, which reminds us of the importance of the data's behavior. PRISM will also suggest a two-tailed approach, which is usually a good default. All we have to do, basically, is click on OK. And PRISM tells us that we have an association which is strong, negative, and significant. And we get a big R square. So strong, negative association, and about 72% of the viability in light can be explained by the depth at which we measure it, which is quite a lot. Now, we look at this graph and we think, wait a minute, where is my line of best fit? Well, as I said a few slides ago, the line of best fit does not come from a correlation, but from a regression, so we have to ask PRISM to do it. So here we go again. In the XY section, we choose linear regression, and the defaults in PRISM are OK for what we want to do here. We recognize our square and the p-value, and we also get the equation for the line of best fit with a negative slope as expected. So here we are talking about prediction, how we can predict y when we know x. By the way, I explain more about our square and line of best fit in the video on regression with two predictors. And PRISM gives us this graph, summarizing quite nicely, both visually and in numbers, the strong, negative and significant relationship between depth and light in a tree. Thank you for listening, and don't forget, stats don't have to be scary.